What's up guys, today we'll be going through how you can value a stock with this simple model. This was a video requested a while back and there's a variety of methods that you can actually use to value a stock. But for this video, I wanted to focus on specifically a simple method that can be used to analyze and value a wide variety of stocks. In this video, I'll walk you through exactly how you can use this model and we'll go over several examples with different stocks. So by the end of this video, you'll have a working model that you can use yourself to help value stocks and make better investment decisions. In this case, we'll be using a simple discounted future earnings model. Now, if you don't know exactly what that means yet, that's fine, we'll get to that in just a second. Now, I have several models myself, but this particular one that we'll be working through was actually one that I saw on another value investors channel Sven Carlin. If you haven't already subscribed to Sven's channel, I highly recommend you do so. He has a lot of perspective and experience in the markets. In one of his recent videos, Sven showed a model valuing the stock of Facebook. I really like this model for its simplicity, so we'll be taking it and only making a few slight adjustments. So here's the model right now. We're going to spend a little bit of time walking through this model, and then we'll go through a couple examples of how you'd actually use this model in practice. After that, we'll then walk through exactly how you build this model step by step going through the details so you can recreate the exact model for yourself. So this model is relatively simple and only has five inputs. One of those inputs is the earnings per share for the current year. The other four inputs are the growth rate for the next five years, the growth rate for the next five to ten years, the discount rate, which is also the required rate of return you're trying to get on your investment, and a terminal multiple, which is a multiple of earnings that the company will be worth at the end of 10 years. You can also think of this as the price to earnings ratio of the company in 10 years. So how this model works is that it takes the earnings per share for the current year and it increases it by the growth rates that you've specified here. So in this case, for the next five years, we're expecting earnings to grow at 5%. And for this case, we'll change this to uh, 1.07. So and then in years 5 through 10, we're expecting earnings to then grow at 7%. So in this case, it'll project out the earnings going forward. And then so in the 11th year, we'll calculate what's called a terminal value, which is just the value of the remaining business that's left uh, after these 10 years of earnings. And so that'll be just a multiple. So in this case, it's 10 of our final 10th year of earnings. Now, since all these earnings are in the future, we want to get back to what would be the equivalent earnings today. To do that, we'll discount each of these earnings by the discount rate or a required rate of return. This converts all the earnings into present value dollars, and by taking the sum of all those, we get a total present value of the value of the company. So basically what this model is saying is if you pay $21.74 for a stock that's currently producing earnings of $2.12, and these growth rates end up being true, then it's likely you might get around a 15% return on your investment. Now, before we take a step further, I wanna go over this discounting because this might be a concept that's new to a lot of you, but it's very important fundamental when thinking about investments and financial decisions. So discounting is an important investment topic that's related to the fact that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. This is because a dollar today can be invested so that'll be worth more than a dollar later on in the future. For example, $1 today invested at 10% per year is worth $1.33 in three years. This is done by taking that $1 and multiplying it by 1.1 three times. In this case, a present value of $1 has a future value in three years of $1.33. By taking the inverse operation, we can find out that a dollar three years from now is worth only about 75 cents today. The way we do this is we take that $1 in year three and we divide it by 1.1 three times to get the present value of 75 cents. Now it's important to note that the higher the discount rate is and the longer period over which you're discounting future values, will mean a lower present value today. So I know that's a short explanation, but I hope that gives you a little bit better idea of discounting. And with that, we'll jump back into the model. So overall, this is a very simple model. And what this model includes are basically earnings estimates, which is your current earnings based on estimates of future growth, a future valuation multiple. So 
in 11 years, the company is going to be worth some multiple of their earnings. And then the final input is your required rate of return on your investment, which we'll be using as the discount rate. I like to use 15% as a consistent discount rate across all the potential investments I'm looking at, just so I'm looking at things apples to apples. Occasionally, I might use a discount rate as low as 12%, but I usually don't like to go much lower than that. The reason being is that if you lower your discount rate, so in this case, I mentioned 12%, notice that the present value of the earnings goes up because we're discounting by a smaller rate. In this case, a stock that used to look attractive only at $22 now seems to look attractive at $26, but you're likely to get less of a return if you buy in at 26 rather than at 22 or so. So now let's take a look at three stock examples I put together to show you how you can use this model on several different stocks. For this first stock, we'll be looking at Facebook, which is the stock that Sven was looking at when he first showed us this model. In this case, the earnings per share from the previous four quarters were $6.47. We're assuming a growth rate of 20% for the next five years, and then 10% from years five to 10. We're still requiring a 15% rate of return on an investment, and we're assuming at the end of those 10 years, at year 11, that Facebook will be trading at 18 times its earnings. So using those estimates, we're able to get a fair present value price of $172.23. Now this is very close to Facebook's price following its quarter two earnings crash. Should these growth and multiple assumptions hold, investors who bought in following the crash of Facebook will likely get a decent profit going forward. One thing to note is that the model is sensitive to growth rates. So for instance, if Facebook is only able to achieve a growth rate of let's say 18% over the next five years instead of 20%, that 2% decrease in growth rate might not seem like much, but it actually has a relatively significant impact on the stock price. So instead of it meeting your required 15% return at $72, now you need to get in at below $160. Similarly, if Facebook only grows at 10%, then it's much overvalued. However, it's possible that you might see growth rates higher, and in which case a higher stock price would be justified. As you can see, since the valuation of the stock is so sensitive to the growth rate, it's usually in your best interest to use conservative estimates for growth rather than aggressive estimates. This is because if you use higher growth rates, you may end up way overpaying for a stock. As with all modeling, the key here is to add in at least some layer of conservatism. You don't want to cherry pick your growth rates and your terminal multiple just to get a stock price that you want to see. Setting more conservative assumptions means you'll be looking at only the very best opportunities when you do invest. So let's take a look at another model with the stock GameStop. Now GameStop is one of the large stock positions in my private portfolio. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above. It's one of my better ones and I'd recommend you checking it out if you haven't seen it already. Now for GameStop, many see this as a declining industry. So why invest in it at all? As you'll see in the model, you can still get significant returns from your investment, even if you're investing in a company with declining earnings. In this case, based on an earnings estimate of $2.90 and a growth rate of actually negative 10%, so earnings are declining 10% each year for the next five years and then leveling off and stabilizing for years five to 10, we're looking at a potential price to get a 15% return of $12.44. Now this assumes GameStop will be trading at a rock bottom six price to earnings ratio in 10 years. Now GameStop actually did touch prices below this for a very short period of time. Now while my cost basis isn't quite there, it's pretty close. Now one other aspect you can use this model for is to test for a potential margin of safety. So in this case, I've heard arguments that GameStop will likely not be in existence in 10 years. Now while I have my doubts on that actually being the case, we can test that within this model. So for instance, we'll take a look at the terminal multiple and we'll actually set that at zero. So in 10 years, GameStop will be completely gone. In this case, that removes the terminal value and we no longer have that in the 11th year. In this case, the stock price or the stock value drops down to a little over $10. So the majority of GameStop's value is actually coming from the earnings in just this first 10 years. This is a way to check your downside risk. In this case, if the terminal value truly ended up being zero in 10 years, we can figure out what the equivalent discount rate or rate of return we would have gotten on that stock. So going back to the original 6% multiple here, we had a value of $12.44. So in this case, even if GameStop went bankrupt in the 10th year, 
but our assumptions on the future earnings were relatively close, we would still come out with a roughly 10% return on investment, even if there's no terminal value. So this is just one way you can use this model to identify opportunities that have a significant amount of upside potential, but relatively limited downside risk. Now here's a final simple model from another stock I'm looking at, Newell Brands. So in this case, it's a very static analysis. Right now I'm assuming that earnings will be relatively consistent, despite the potential upside of a stock buyback that should increase earnings per share. And I'm also assuming its price to earnings multiple will remain near historic lows at around 10 in the next 10 years. In this case, in order to get likely a 15% return, I would need to wait until the stock reached a price of $17.56. Now you can also estimate what the rate of return might be for its current price. In this case, it'd be roughly around 12% given the current price which is near this $20.80. So 12% for some people might be an acceptable rate of return, but you'd be giving yourself a larger margin of safety if you waited till 15. On the other hand, if you always wait for this higher 15, you may see less opportunities that you'd actually end up investing in compared to 12. So that's something that you'll need to decide for yourself as an investor. Do I want to wait for only the very, very best opportunities to invest? Or am I willing to maybe accept slightly lower returns, but have more options and investments to choose from? Now we'll be building this model from scratch and I'll be walking you through exactly all the steps so you can have this exact model for yourself to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the model down here and I'm actually going to select all of it and I'm going to copy and paste it as values. So up here we've got formulas that you'll actually need to make this model work. In this case, we've just got the values and formatting. So if I update any of this, nothing is gonna change down here in the bottom. So that's fine for learning how to build this model because basically what you can do here is that you can copy this structure down here in terms of how we're going to set up the model and then we can fill in the formulas. So in this case, the first thing we can do is we'll start out very simple. So for the dates, if you want, you can set this formula up here in the top just set this date equal to uh, the previous date plus one. So we'll take this formula and we'll actually copy this over to the rest of the years. Now that way in the future, this is just more of a cosmetic thing, but if you want to update the year, you can do so and you don't have to manually change each of these years. Okay, so that's the easy stuff. Now for the next part, we want to grow our earnings by this growth rate for the next five years. And then starting in the five years after that, we want to grow it by this growth rate. So to do this, we're going to hit equals and we're going to select the earnings for the previous year. And what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply that by the growth rate for the next five years. So this is the growth rate for every year during each of those five years. What we're going to do now before hitting enter is we'll actually hit F4 and that'll put a dollar sign in front of both the letter and the number for the reference to our growth rate. And this is what we want for now because this will lock the growth rate in place. So when we press enter, we'll have our formula right there. But since that growth rate is locked in place, we can just drag this formula across for the next five years and we will have the appropriate formula in here. Now we can fix this uh, border formatting later. So if you'll notice in the formula up here for the 2024 earnings, we're referencing the 2023 earnings and we're multiplying it by the appropriate growth rate. So that's what we want and that's good. Next, for the next section, we're taking the previous year's earnings, which is basically the same part of the formula. But in this case, we're multiplying it by the second growth rate. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna lock that in using F4 and then we're going to hit enter there. So now if we drag that across for the next five years, we'll be using the second growth rate. And so we can just double check that by clicking on the formula. Uh, yep, it's using the previous earnings and then it's also using this second growth rate. So that's good, that's what we want. And we can move on to the terminal value. So the terminal value is actually not too bad because we're just going to take the last year of earnings that we have in our model and we're going to multiply that by the terminal multiple or the price to earnings ratio uh, at the end of those 10 years. So in this case, it's just a very simple formula it's the last year's earnings times the multiple. So as a check, I'm actually gonna change this back to what we have, the 10% growth rate in here. And yeah, so it looks like we're checking up and matching with our previous model. So now comes probably the most challenging aspect of this model, which is to discount these earnings back to the present value. 
So for this, it might be easiest to break this into steps. So when discounting these earnings back, we basically need to know three things. The earnings amount that we're actually discounting back, what discount rate we're using, and how many years or how long we're discounting for. So in this case, let's start out by just bringing in the earnings from each year and putting them into our formula. So now we have basically just a copy of these earnings. And I'm actually gonna take this time to input the formula for the present value, which is basically just a sum of all these present value earnings. Now, obviously this does not match with what we're actually looking for because none of these earnings have been discounted yet to the present value. So to do that, we're gonna to need to incorporate the discount rate. So what we'll do is we'll take the earnings for that year and we'll multiply it by one plus, and then we'll select our discount rate. And for that, we're also gonna hit F4, so that'll be locked in place. And then we do that, we'll hit the close parentheses, and then we'll hit enter. Now what that did is that actually increased our earnings by 15%, but we want to decrease it by 15%. So to make that change, we're going to take that discount rate that was applied, and we're gonna raise it to the negative one power. And that'll basically, instead of multiplying by uh, 1.15, it'll divide by 1.15. So cool. So that worked out, that's the 675 that we want and that matches with above. So now we just need to do that for the rest. Now what you may be tempted to do is, okay, maybe take that and drag it across and then manually change these for two years, for three years, which you can do, but there's a better way to do it and for spreadsheets that are much longer than this one, uh, you'll want to know how to do it in a formula. So in this case, we want this number up here to be negative one in this year, negative two, negative three, and so on. So one way we could do that is to use these year references to try and get the numbers we're looking for. So in this case, instead of negative one, what we're going to do is we're going to select the year above the earnings, and we're going to actually hit F4 here to lock that in. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do minus, and then we're going to select the year above the earnings again. And so what that'll do is basically get a zero. And what we wanted initially, remember, was negative one. So we're going to minus one right here. So basically what that's saying is 2019 minus 2019 minus one gives us minus one. Just so you can see that a little more clearly, I'm going to reproduce that down here below. So C14, F4 to lock it in, minus C14 again, minus one, and that gets us minus one for that year. But if you drag it across, it gets us the year and pattern that we want for the rest of the years as well. So if we drag this across, we're now matching up with our model up here. So at this point, everything should match and we should be seeing similar results across both models. And we can just test that and check that here. And so, yeah. It looks like both of them are matching up. So for your reference, what I can do is something you can use to check your results. And in this case, if you see you know, this all matching up with these inputs, then you know you're good to go and you've got the correct model. It'll take a few seconds to clean up the borders and then boom, you should be good to go. Now, if you have any issues building this model, just leave me a note in the comments and I can help you work through those issues. Additionally, even after watching this, if you have any questions about how to use the model, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll also get back to you. But at this point, you should now have an additional financial tool in your investment toolkit that you can help use to value stocks in the market. With conservative assumptions, this will help you find opportunities where you're likely to get a good positive return with limited downside risk. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and I'll be sure to make more videos like it in the future. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I've got a lot of good stuff coming and you don't want to miss it. Until next time, my name's Michael. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.